The Land Before Time is directed by Don Bluth and stars Gabrielle Damon, Candace Hudson, Will Ryan, and Judith Barcy. The film tells a story about a group of young dinosaurs being separated from their parents due to a devastating earthquake in some ways more tragic than others. These kids find themselves having to work together in order to survive the mysterious beyond in order to reach the Great Valley. I remember watching the Lamb for Time films as a kid. I had some of the VHSs here. Some I bought later on in my life and did not grow up watching the VHSs. And some I had to have replaced because I replayed the shit out of this movie so many times as a kid. And I had to have gotten the Blu-ray because it was the only one that worked. Until much later I was able to find this guy at a Goodwill. So, yeah. I grew up with this franchise. I love these films. I loved watching them, especially the original and VHS. This VHS, at least the one that I used to have, it's not this replacement one, the VHS I had as a kid, it was like one of my treasured items. I love that movie so much. And so when I decided to rewatch it as an adult, I was kind of worried how was this movie going to hold up after all of these years and then like a few years ago when i decided to re-watch it once again after a few years not watching it i found myself very much appreciating it more than i had as a kid and to this day i still re-watch this movie plenty of times and I think it's gone to the point where I could safely say that The Land Before Time is my favorite animated movie of all time. Don Bluth, who I actually met earlier this year at a Momocon convention, he was really nice and was fun to talk with him. His direction here is absolutely spectacular. The way he's able to linger on many of these scenes, and despite the film having a pretty short runtime. It never felt like all the time is wasted. It felt like all the emotional moments were able to hit beautifully and it gets to the point really well and hits you in the feel that you needed to. Especially Lilith's mother's death, which in all honesty is the most emotional part of the film. And to this day, it still brings an actual tear to my eye. In fact, I will say, and I think I'm with many others who have said this before, this death is more impactful for me than Mufasa or Bambi's mom. I love those movies. I love Bambi and the Lion King. And I really appreciate the fact that it explores death route like that. But it's not like a major plot of the film. And they get brushed over pretty easily in comparison, at least, to The Lame for Time. In which the death of Wilfred's mother very much lingers on a good portion of the film where we see Lilfoot go through a very depressional state of affairs where he is thinking he's seeing his mother but it's actually his shadow. He's depressed and trying to go back to some of her footsteps and trying to get a feel of her somehow. All these little moments here in this section of the film, despite it being five minutes long, just with the visuals alone, and the storytelling is just so beautiful. And it's only something that could be achieved by Don Bluth. At least the level of motion you're able to get out of such scenes like this. And that stems for the rest of the characters. All the characters here are absolutely fantastic in my opinion. And they all bent off with each other extremely well. There's a reason why there are so many mostly bad sequels. I would say that there's some that are okay and pretty fun and some that I just like for nostalgia reasons but the reason why there are so many of these sequels is the fact that these kids work so well together. These actors and actresses that are working on these characters and voicing them especially some of the child actors like Gabrielle Damon and Candace Hudson at the time and Judith Barcy rest in peace, you beautiful soul, taken too soon and too young. All of these actors and actresses do a fantastic job. Gabrielle Damon as Littlefoot is very innocent, very loving, and cares for everyone around. But because he is a kid, there is another side to him that 
gets a big temper when things don't go his way. And you see his character having to develop through that, especially through his grief of his mother, which is definitely taking a toll on him as he's trying to keep his newfound friends all together. is just taking a real toll on his emotional state. Especially with Sarah, who is basically like his total opposite. Who doesn't really care all much about the characters around her and is mostly looking after herself. Mostly due to the fact that her father raised her to be sort of a racist. In fact, definitely a racist. She had that sort of ideology in which she feels like she is entitled. She is the one that is right all the time. But when things don't go her way, you also see a bit of development with her in that regard as she's had to learn that maybe she doesn't have all the right answers. And her stubbornness puts her and many of the characters in through many events that are dangerous and almost gets them killed. And she has to learn to try and understand that she really doesn't have all the answers and maybe her way of thinking is not right. I love the fact that Don Blues was able to explore many of these characters in many deep ways and despite the short runtime of an hour and eight minutes, he was able to do so much with these characters, at least the main group of characters like Sarah, Ducky, or Lilfoot. Spike and Petrie, while wow, are fun to watch and bring a good level of humanity and humor to the group and the film the itself. I think in terms of character, these characters don't get developed all that much. With Petrie, his thing is that he can't fly and he's trying to learn how to fly throughout the entire film. It's only due to a simple coincidence near the end where he does learn how to fly and it was kind of silly I will say that but at least it is some sort of character development with Spike. Look, he is awesome. Spike is really fun to watch, but definitely he doesn't have any character de development. He's just there to be sort of comic relief for the characters and for Ducky to have someone to interact with and maybe find herself a newfound brother. As these characters grow close together, they sort of form a family of sorts, especially with Ducky and Spike. And that development between those characters, while subtle, is definitely prevalent throughout the rest of the entire film. But just that with Spike in terms of his personal character development, because he has no dialogue and just wants to eat, he doesn't really have the most development out of the entire group. But I think that was just done on purpose. And honestly, it's not really a negative. It's just something that I noticed. Now what kind of monster would I be talking about The Land Before Time without talking about its beautiful score? James Horner, rest in peace to you beautiful soul, gives in my opinion one of his best musical scores of all time. This soundtrack I cannot listen to without getting so emotional or at least tearing up a bit. Especially in his most famous track, Whispering Winds, which plays throughout Lilfoot's mother's death and throughout Lilfoot's depressional state of affairs. I just can't listen to that without crying. And The Great Migration is a great opening track, showing us the majesty in all of this land, these dinosaurs, then slowly getting into the kids hatching, and then we see Lilfoot hatch from his egg, and then the score goes to a small flute and whistle, and it's just... Oh, the soundtrack is beautiful. I love it so much, and it's probably my favorite track in any Don Bluth film, probably my favorite James Horner track, and it's definitely one of my favorite film soundtracks of all time. The score here, while very minimalistic in terms of its length, does so much for the film and brings out so many emotions of danger, tension, but also fun, hope, and emotion. I don't know if I said it before, but if I have, I'll just say it again. The animation 
is beautiful. The way the Mysterious Beyond is designed and looks is absolutely scary. You feel like these characters are in danger. This place is incredibly dangerous with not only a sharp tooth running around trying to kill them, especially in a very epic fight scene between Lilith's mother and the sharp tooth. Seriously, that fight scene in terms of animation, lighting, and direction, and scope, and scale is probably one of my favorite animated fight scenes of all time. It's so epic and awesome. And James Horner's soundtrack here once again proved that he was a force to be reckoned with. But throughout the rest of the film, the animation and tone of the film is very bleak, very dark. The way the volcanoes in the backgrounds look is incredible. You feel like this place is dead. The tar pit scene is very tension filled. I love it. I love the way this film had a much darker tone and goes through a lot of dark places in terms of story and what it puts its characters through. And this is where I'm going to get to the ending. I think I like the ending the way it is. And I know for a lot of people who does know about the production behind the scenes of this movie, the ending is supposed to be different. Lilfoot finds the Great Valley before saving his friends and then defeating the Sharptooth. And then after they defeat the Sharptooth, then they head to the Great Valley knowing that's already there. In this version, they still don't know about the Great Valley. And while I would have liked to have some sort of proper transition in which Lilfoot makes the decision to go back to save his friends, I think the decision to save the Great Valley reveal until much later in the film as the final scene brings out so much more emotion than just Lilfoot already finding it and then trying to go back to his friends. While I do get story-wise why his friends will be important in that regard and I still think the movie can work in terms of pure emotion and having the audience on the edge of their seats wondering if they're ever going to make it to the Great Valley. I think saving it for last in the way it's cut here brings out so much more emotion than what was previously scripted. And while I would have loved to have seen many of these deleted scenes, especially some of the darker scenes that were cut just because they were just too dark for Spielberg's taste, I liked the way this was edited. And as a kid, and even now, despite a few hiccups in the editing and story, I could barely tell that this film was chopped down and edited. The editing here is really good, really smooth. It's just fun to look at some of the mistakes that were made and inconsistencies. Kind of like how I feel with watching all the inconsistencies with Jurassic Park being another Spielberg production like The Land Before Time. Wow, it seems like with Spielberg and dinosaurs, he has no idea about continuity until The Lost World, which I guess third time's a charm. All jokes aside, The Land Before Time is absolutely incredible. It's my favorite animated movie. The emotion is there. Characters are beautiful. The animation is spectacular. The musical score is phenomenal. The story is engaging throughout. And I just love everything about this film. Yes, it definitely is cut down. You could tell in some points, but the little mistakes that were made in this film are definitely overshadowed by so much emotion and pure joy that the film gives with its characters, with its themes, and how well it explores those themes, including a racism, death, and grief. I think it explored all these themes so beautifully in a way that brings the story and its characters full circle by the end. And that final shot with all these characters finally together in the Great Valley, it just not only brings so much nostalgia to me, but the emotional feelings I get watching it and seeing these characters go through so much turmoil, having to have gone this final ending. This is what Don Blues is great at. This is what he is, or what he was, made for to be a director. These kinds of stories that just bring so much emotion out of you and to have you feel for these characters. And when you get that happy ending, 
It feels so incredibly earned. I love this movie and I highly recommend you guys go see it if you haven't watched it yet. It feels like it's being forgotten as the years go on and I don't want that to happen. I want more people to watch this film. The Land Before Time is absolutely incredible. It is my personal favorite animated movie of all time. I'm going to give The Land Before Time an A+. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm hoping to make more movie reviews soon. Just everything has been so busy lately. But now I'm getting back into the fold of making movie reviews now. As you saw, I made my Five Nights at Freddy's and Killers of the Flower Moon review. I'm going to review Secret Invasion and Loki pretty soon when I have the time. Just that right now I'm working on so much, okay? So those will be coming soon. Stay tuned, and I hope you guys have a good night, and I cannot wait to talk more about movies once again, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.